I've always been in, into drumming. Even when I was a kid and the marching band would come down the street, we lived a few blocks from a, a main street where the parades would happen. I was drawn to the drumming, the cadences of the drums, and just feeling the vibrations. And then when I heard these taiko drums, especially these big ones, I mean, you can feel the vibration down to your bones, and it's not just experiencing it with your ears. So uh, as soon as I saw taiko, I said, oh, I got to do that. In the 60s and 70s when I was growing up, what was coming out at that time in terms of, for example, Asian American music, it would be Asians playing soul music or playing jazz. And I thought, well, these are Asian faces, but um, where's the Asian component? And I felt that in order to really have a contribution as far as taiko is concerned, I really need to go back to Japan even though it was for a year or two, to experience and study and learn. Playing taiko for me meant getting closer to the roots of my ancestors, and that was important to me. It was important to be able to speak the language, to be able to live in the, the land where my ancestors came from and just get connected to that. The more I studied and the more longer I lived in Japan, the more I realized how little I knew. I mean, I've been playing taiko for 37 years now, and I still feel like, well, it, am I really qualified to teach? Or, and when people call me sensei, which means teacher, it still feels a little uncomfortable. But um, I, still, I, I still feel a need to share what, what I do know with people. As long as I feel I'm making a contribution on stage to the music, I think I can keep playing. Um, when I stop making a contribution, then, then it's time to retire. And then it's the same with my people who are training to become a member of our, our group. It's, I say when you start making a contribution is when you should be on stage. <laughs>